And so it's done. U.S. President Donald Trump has now become the third member of an exclusive club no one really wants to be a part of. A trial in the Senate will now follow the vote to impeach the president in the House as, dis- as, in the House as decreed in the Constitution. The House's articles of impeachment level two accusations against the president that he solicited a foreign country to help him politically and that he orchestrated, he obstructed Congress. The Republican president has denied any wrong doing, calling the inquiry a witch hunt. Professor John Stremla of International Relations Department at Wits Waters Ranch University joins us now for more. A very good evening to you, uh, Professor Stremla. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Good evening. Uh, so not unexpected, but is it really a victory for the Democrats? It's progress. It's a, a very carefully framed indictment of Donald Trump's manipulation of the office of presidency for personal political gain in his dealings with Ukraine and it does second article uh, draw attention to the fact that the White House has not provided staff members and others that could at least defend the president if there was something to defend if there were merits on his side but the Republicans don't argue facts they argue their uh, condemnation of the whole process and right now the country is so polarized it's hard to see how you bridge this gap going forward until the election next year. No, and we'll talk about the uh, polarization in just a moment, just between uh, the two parties. But the Republicans have a majority in Senate. So um, some would say it almost seems impossible that he will be impeached at all, Donald Trump. It requires under the Constitution a two-thirds vote in the Senate. And the Republican majority is narrow, only three or four seats. But nevertheless, it's impossible for me to see how you get to a two-thirds majority based on the polarization so far. And in the last several hours, we've had a lot of jockeying about the terms of this trial, with the Democrats suggesting they may not even send over the articles of impeachment until they get more clarity about who's going to say what on behalf of Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Uh, The evidence against President Donald Trump, is it weighty enough? I think it's very clear and very compelling. It's been largely delivered by professional civil servants who are nonpartisan and his appointees who have nevertheless come forward under subpoena and given their story of how he tried to leverage this political influence from the president of Ukraine. Hmm. Now, I want to talk about uh, the, the Senate rules itself, how they're going to work, because uh, Nancy Pelosi is saying at this point they're not going to reveal who is uh, going to present their case, but how important is that? Well, it becomes important because the Constitution, the American Constitution of 1789, is not clear on the procedures for um, having a trial in the Senate on impeachment. Mm-hmm. And you've said only three cases in, in, the, in, the, in the history, now this is the third. And therefore, they have to negotiate the terms. This is a political constitutional process. And so the negotiations haven't been concluded yet. Okay, so let's talk about um, the acquittal. What would it take for Donald Trump to be acquitted? It'd take two-thirds of the Senate, and at the moment, he has dominated, including the leadership of the Senate, which was not in favor of his candidacy back in 2016. He, okay. he won by surprise, and therefore now they have been all whipped into line. Mm-hmm. So, why the two articles exactly? Could there not have been more to strengthen the case? To yes, make they, the case? Yeah, well... The, Speaker Pelosi and the team in intelligence and judiciary in the House concluded that they should keep it as simple and clear to the American people under the Constitution the reference to impeachment does include bribery and basically what that was 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 drawing attention to was the way that President Trump used his office to hold back taxpayer dollars for military assistance to Ukraine in order to get a favor done by the president, which would be to impugn Joe Biden, who is likely to be his enemy. That's letting a foreign power into the domestic politics. And we've had 400 pages of the Mueller investigation of the 216 election that showed, in fact, 
There was extensive, and there have been indictments for the Russians who were involved, foreign involvement in, in, in U.S. elections. That's not healthy, and it's ironic given that Trump is so anti-foreign, anti-immigrants, mm -hmm. anti-Muslim, anti-Mexican, and yet with regard to the Russians, for some reason, probably financial, he seems to be giving green lights. Now, I want to talk, uh, go back to the issue of uh, process. The Democrats say they were unhappy with the trial and how it could be held. They're saying that, uh, as I said, Nancy Pelosi indicated that there may be a, a delay in sending the articles as well. But what is there to bargain in terms of the terms of the proceedings? Well, it's all perceptions in the politics of, of, uh, of, of America at the moment. Um, you know, so much of our politics happens in the party behind closed doors, and we get glimmers of that that you alluded to. But in the case of the United States, what the Republicans are trying to do is to stonewall and say Trump created no wrong, did no wrongdoing. Let's move on. This is all a mm -hmm. witch hunt. What the Dem what the Democrats are trying to do is say these are the facts. You know, these are the, this is in the transcript of the call to Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, on, on July 25th. And Trump was abusing his office of power, which under the Constitution he should not do. And that's their with argument. Obstruction. Yes, it's, that's, a, that's, that's called abuse of power. And then because he would not allow any of his senior staff to give testimony to the House, or they say now to the Senate, the Democrats are saying, now wait a minute, you can't have it both ways. You say that he's innocent, but you won't give it. those who know beyond himself, or even himself, he could come and testify, but he won't do it. He's just stonewalled. Mm. Just looking at the team behind him, because there, those who say, you know, Ultimately, this may not necessarily be a blow to Donald Trump. It could be um, some brimstone for his campaigning ahead of November, that it's something that could be bolstering his uh, campaign. What are your thoughts about that? The people who are behind him, who surround him, who defend him, and those that are his serious critics, how do they all square up? It's, it's hard to be brief about this, but in South African terms, we've just had a big debate about state capture. Yes. The Republican Party is slipping into the, in the minority. They control rural states which have disproportionate representation in the Senate under the old Constitution, and they have support in the South which has historically been for suppressing voters because of uh, the history of slavery and discrimination there. And that has given Trump the win in the Electoral College in 2016, even though Hillary Clinton got more votes. And he wants to duplicate that, and they want him to duplicate that. And they are sufficiently scared that America is becoming more like South Africa, a diverse country of, 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 of many uh, nationalities. And the old guard of elite is endangered. We saw this play out in Britain. And that's the way the game is now being played. And that's what is going to be at issue in the 2020 election. And it matters because if America is going to be a liberal democracy, South Africa needs partners. You know, the world is becoming more authoritarian, more illiberal, more oligarchic. Just think of BRICS now today. Mm. So the stakes are very high. But that has to be played out in the body politic. Thank you very much for your time and insights, uh, Professor John Stremlau, who is uh, with the University of Witwatersrand International Relations.